Hello friends, in this part of Django Simplified, we are going to learn how to handle get and post requests from the browser. We shall also learn a little more about how the communication among browser, urls.py, views.py and html pages takes place. When we say get and post requests, in almost all the cases we are talking about form submission. When we fill in a form and click the submit button, a request along with the form data goes to the server. The server gets the form data and performs whatever processing is required and then an appropriate response is sent to the browser. For example, when we enter a search term in a search engine web page and press enter, a request goes to the corresponding server along with the search term and the server responds with appropriate response. As another example, suppose we fill the form to create a Gmail account and submit the form. A request goes to Gmail server along with the form data. Gmail server takes appropriate action and returns a suitable response telling us whether the mail has been created or not. Let us see another example. Suppose we have to pay electricity bill online. We fill in the appropriate form and submit it. In this case also, a request along with the form data goes to the corresponding web server. There can be infinitely many such examples. Every time a form is filled and submitted, a request along with the form data goes to the server. Here the Django example that we are going to discuss is a simple form with two fields only, the first name and the last name. In this example, the home page will provide a link to the form. When the link is clicked, the form appears. The user fills in the form and clicks the submit button. When the form is submitted, the browser shows a hello message along with the user's full name. Let us see the execution of this example. The user types localhost 8000 in the address bar and presses enter. The home page appears. The home page contains a hyperlink. User clicks on the hyperlink and the form appears. User fills in the form and clicks the submit button. The browser shows hello message along with the user's full name. Let us first see the coding that has gone into creating this application and then we shall see how the process of request and response works for this example. The home page which provides a link to the form has been created with the function home in views.py. This function has an HTML code. This code is returned by the function and the form is shown in the browser. The blank form has been created by the file getform.html which is stored in the folder pages. Notice these three lines of the code. First, action equal to show result method equal to get in the form text specifies that the form will be submitted to the URL show result using get method. Second, input name equal to fname creates the first name text field and the name of this field is fname. Input name equal to lname creates the last name text field and the name of this field is lname. Remember the field names fname and lname as these will be required while processing the form data. The function in views.py corresponding to this form is this function has only one statement to render getData.html page in the browser. Understand that while working with Django, no web page can be shown directly in the browser. If we try to open a web page directly in the browser, it will not behave as a part of the website. Every web page has to be displayed through a function in views.py. The final page which displays hello message along with the user's full name is created by showResult.html and it is rendered by showResult function in views.py. Let us see the code of showResult function in views.py. The request passed to the function is an object which contains a dictionary with the name get. Why get? Because the form was submitted by get method. This dictionary contains the data submitted by the form as key value pairs. The first statement of the code is nm1 equal to request dot get fname. This statement picks the data of fname field of the form and assigns it to the variable nm1. Similarly, the second statement assigns the value of lname to the variable nm2. The third statement concatenates the values of fname and lname with a space in between and assigns the resultant string to the variable nm. Now the variable nm contains user's full name. 
The last statement renders show result.html in the browser. Here the render function has three parameters. The third parameter is a dictionary which contains dynamic data to be shown in the web page. Here the data contains only one key value pair. The key being name and the value being the variable nm which stores the full name of the user. Now see the HTML code once again. It contains a name in a pair of double braces. It means that before sending this page to the browser, name field has to be replaced by the corresponding value which is supplied in the dictionary as the third parameter. So in our example, name will be replaced by Yogesh Madan and then this page will be rendered in the browser. Now that we have understood the code of different web pages and views.py, let us now see how does all this communication take place and the pages are delivered to our browser. When we type localhost colon 8000 in the web browser, the request is sent to urls.py to identify the function to be called. It is something like domain name resolution where IP address is identified for the given domain name. Here the URL maps to home function in views.py. Therefore home function from views.py is invoked. This function then results in home page shown in the browser. When user clicks at the hyperlink in the home page, a request is made for the URL get data. The request is sent to urls.py to identify the function to be called. The corresponding function is get data from views.py. So get data function in views.py is called. This function sends the page getData.html to the browser and thus the blank form is displayed in the browser. The user fills in the form and clicks the submit button. When the user clicks the submit button, a request along with the form data is sent to the browser. If you remember the code of the form, it had action equal to show result. So on submission of the form, the request is made to the URL show result. The code also specified method equal to get. So on submission of the form, we see the form data in the browser's address bar. The string showing the form data in the address bar is called query string. Notice that there is a question mark sign between the URL and the query string. You might have noticed such query strings many times while surfing the net. For example, when you type something in a search engine, then when the results come, the search terms are also displayed as query string. So when the user clicks at the submit button, a request is made for show result along with the form data. Now this request goes to urls.py and urls.py identifies the corresponding function to be called. This function is show result in views.py. Now this function is called and we see a hello message along with the user's name in the browser. This is how the communication among different files and functions takes place. I think we can now summarize whatever we have learned till now in this video. In the folder pages, there are two HTML files, getData.html and showData.html. Views.py contains three functions, home, getData and showResult. URLs.py contains a list URL patterns, which maps URLs to functions in views.py. We have already seen the code of these files. Let us now once again see how does this communication take place. The client requests for the getData form. The server responds to the request and sends get data form to the client. The user fills in the form and clicks on the submit button. This sends a request to the server to show the result and the server responds by sending the hello page. Now let us see how this works with post instead of get method. In the getData.html, if we change the form method from get to post, then our form will be submitted by post method. For the server to accept this form, we have to add csrf token template tag in the form. We also have to change get to post in the code for show result function in views.py. No other change is required anywhere else. User experience will remain the same. User will not notice any change when the form method is changed from get to post. But there is a difference. No query string is displayed in the address bar when the form is submitted using post method. It means that after submission of the form, no one can get to know what data was submitted. This makes post method more secure. Therefore, get method is used to send only insensitive data 
and post method is used to send sensitive data like account number, password, OTP, etc. While using post method, if we don't give CSRF token template tag in the form, then we see an error message on submitting the form. This message tells that CSRF verification failed and request is aborted. We don't have to go into the details of this error, but we should know that CSRF stands for Cross Site Request Forgery and it is an attack that forces an end user to execute unwanted actions on a web application in which they are currently authenticated. So CSRF token template tag is a kind of security mechanism in Django. I hope this video helped you to understand Django a bit more. If you liked this video, click on the like button and share it and subscribe to this channel.